Hi, I'm Susan Lewis, arts and culture producer from WRTI 90.1 in Philadelphia. I had the chance to sit down and talk with pianist Jean-Yves Thibaudet in March 2018 when he was in town playing Bernstein's Symphony No. 2, known as The Age of Anxiety, with the Philadelphia Orchestra. It's a piece he's also playing on tour with the orchestra in Europe and Israel. After talking about the music and Bernstein's wide-ranging talents, I asked Jean-Yves about his own varied interests. You also explore different kinds of music off the classical concert stage. You, you've done jazz, and you've performed soundtracks to movies. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I need that diversity, and I'm a very curious person, and I, in my way, I mean, you know, I don't compose or I don't do lots of other things, but in my way, I think I do lots of things, as much as a pianist can do. I like play chamber music, I played for singers. As you said, I've done a few jazz uh, uh, trips, <laughs> and also soundtrack. Yeah, I'm fascinated by soundtracks. Uh, I live in Los Angeles for many years now, and, and the movie industry, of course, we're all fascinated somehow by it. But I think the relation between the movie and the music is something that is incredible, that people sometimes don't realize. But I think half of the movie is the music. I mean, if you see when you see the movie without the music and when you add the music, that suddenly it becomes alive. So th- I re- have the most you know incredible respect for the composers, because music composers for... I think sometimes composers for the movies are I, a little bit looked up like like second class citizen you know it's like you have the composer and then the soundtrack like they're not really they they're not really composed you know and i think that's so ridiculous and i think some people like bernstein i mean he would have you know i mean him and in those days prokofiev shostakovich Kornel, everybody was writing for the movies nothing wrong with that and some of those composers and absolutely uh, phenomenal composers and i have the greatest admiration for them and that's why i love to work with them and when i have an opportunity to do be part of a soundtrack is great fun for me what is your process when you do a soundtrack? Well, it's a very, very different process. It's, in fact, almost the opposite of, of when I perform anything else uh, in my normal, if I can say, my, my other life as a soloist. Or, because suddenly you're the interpret, of course, but you're serving the story and the movie and the images. I cannot do whatever I want and feel whatever I feel at every moment. No, it's not me anymore. What I see, I have to create with the sound to make it happen. And that's incredible because sometimes we repeat 17, 20, 25 times the same very small sequence until we get it. Not only together sync because we have, you know, it's very, in time, it's very important, but also the mood and everything. And, and, and a good director will come and inside the studio and will say, no, here, remember, you see, remember that little boy here, that moment he just looked. I said, okay, okay, we do it again. But then the moment when you know you got, you got it, it's unbelievable. I can see in the studio, it's like silence. Everybody stops and then they say, I think we got it. And then we go in and we play the movie with the music and it just click. It just something happens. And it is fascinating. And it's not something that I'm used to. I mean, usually I just do, I, at every moment that I play, I will play how I feel at that moment, and that's normal, and that's what you expect. But there, you don't anymore. You're not the boss anymore. You're at the service. You're really helping. And that's really something that I like to do. It's a challenge. It's another challenge. Do you watch the movie without music? Yes. Um, I mean, I rarely watch the entire thing, but I watch as it goes, sometime before accepting even, I, I will watch, I mean, a little bit of it. Uh, then I watch bits of it, and certainly before I record anything, I, I'm look. I'm, I'm in the, go in the studio and I look at the monitor, and I kind of watch it a few times to understand what's going on. Or they explain to me where it is in the story. Or what, we never do it every, anything in order. That's another thing. Sometimes we start in the middle, the end, then we do another sequence from the beginning. So it's difficult. So you have to really immediately always immerse yourself in where you are in the story. Um, but I know I'm very prepared and briefed, and, and, and you have to. I mean, if it's after a book, I read the books. It's all very important. So you've been playing the piano since you were about three years old. Five. I mean, technically, my first <laughs> lesson I was five. So, I mean, I went to the piano when I was three, apparently. I was attracted to it. So the piano has been part of my life since I'm three, you're right. But I started studying it since I'm five, yes. And why do you love the piano? It's just the most miraculous instrument. I mean, the piano feels like having the entire orchestra at your, at your hands. I feel like... I can do everything. I mean, I played violin for four years, actually, and it's it's a beautiful but a very difficult instrument, and also I find it very, it's very limited. You only have four strings. I mean, I, I don't know. For me, having started with the piano, I just could not. I mean, after four years of violin, I said, no, I'm sticking with the piano. This is my instrument. I mean, you just feel like the king of the world. You have this, you can create every color, every dynamic. You can, it's just such a rich instrument. Is there music you go to when you're feeling a certain way, 
to practice or play or? Oh, sure. I think it's like visiting friends. It's like calling a friend, you know, and having conversation or now texting. I mean, whatever it is now, or going on Facebook. But for me, it's, yeah, it's going to, if I remember other piece, just sit at the piano and play it or just take the score out of my library and say, oh, I feel like playing this. And this, yeah, it's, it's how you feel. It's like, it's like eating something. What you feel suddenly, you feel like eating a dessert. You feel like, and it is important in your life. And that's another thing about music is that it's like, it's like the, well, not the only, but thank God there are friends that are never, you know, that are always there with you. But there really aren't so many in life. But music is one of them. You know that music will never, you know, will never do anything against you. It's always there with you. It's always to make you happy. And it's like a, it's like a friend that's always part of your life. And I think that's so important too. Is there a particular piece? No, it does depend on the moment. It's, really, it's impossible to say. Okay. Do you have non-musical things you do, uh, like fun downtime things? Oh, I love do lots of things. Do you have pets? Uh, I do in Los Angeles. I have two dogs. Yeah, I mean, I always say they're not really my dog. I just feel like I'm not there enough. But, but one of the most beautiful things that made me feel the best many years ago is when somebody told me, somebody who knew what he was talking about, told me that dogs don't have a notion of time, which means whether you leave for five minutes to go and come right back or you leave for one month, they don't know the difference. Uh, and that made me feel so much better because I, I, you know, before that I felt I could not have pets just because I was. I mean, as long as somebody's taking care of them, obviously, but. They don't really know how long you're gone. So whether I just go to the store to get some milk or I go on tour for one month, when I come back, they're just as happy. They give you the same happiness for five minutes, they for one month. So that makes you feel better, you know. Otherwise, I would I would really feel bad about it. But so that's one thing. But so many other things. I love to read. I love to go to the movies. I'm always interested. And same thing with the art, same thing with the architecture. I love to venture in a new city. I mean, I've never been there, just walk around and look at things. And we're so lucky to be able to travel so much. And that's why sometimes I said it was frustrating because we're so quickly in the city that you want to do more. But And you also have to be realistic. We're tired from the trip. You have to rest in the afternoon. There's very little time really left. So you have to be... Uh, Really care. I mean, one of my first things is museums. And whenever I go somewhere, if I have time, I immediately go to a museum. If I can carve one hour of my schedule, I'll go to a museum, especially in one I don't know. Or, or if it's one I know, then I'll go straight to my favorites, like visiting friends. I, say, oh, I go to that painting, that sculpture. And that's fabulous, too. You say, okay, I'm going back to Chicago. Oh, I'll go to the Arts Institute and say hi to that Monet painting. That is one of my favorites. And it's, it's really special. So you mentioned that when you perform in concert, you play the way you feel in the moment. And I suppose even when you've played a piece like The Age of Anxiety many, many times, every time is different. And you're playing this with the Philadelphia Orchestra on tour. Yes. When you're playing in different cities, do the different audiences affect the performances? Well, I think everything does. I think the whole as well. I think it's very important, the whole, uh, the acoustic, uh, I mean, all of that, it makes a difference. And of course, the... I think the atmosphere also being in a different city, in a different country, I mean, everything, the trip, I mean, everything, we, we're human, you know, we, we react to things. We all do as a group, as an individual. And that's why a tour is always a fascinating moment because we get to know each other even better and we react to, to all those things together. And, and I think it will be very interesting. I think some places where the orchestra doesn't go so often to go to those other great halls in the world, I think it is an inspiration. Thank you so much, Jean-Yves Thibaudet. Thank you. Everything you hear on WRTI is made possible by members. Please join today.